Hey guys, what's going on? Jeb here, and in today's video, Bitcoin is on the very precipice of confirming a new bull market. Over the last five days, we've seen a Bitcoin rally of over 20%. We've broken critical levels of resistance, and we now find ourselves just hundreds of dollars from the final bullish confirmation we're going to need to see Bitcoin re-enter a new bull market, the likes of which we haven't seen since the middle part of last year. In today's video, we'll be discussing the rally that we've seen in the last few days and all the technicals surrounding the possibility of Bitcoin having a new bullish breakout moving here into the next couple of days. But before we dive on into it, guys, I do want to remind you of the first cohort. I promise I'm not going to keep bringing this up every single video, but since we just just started the coffee and crypto morning live streams we had about a 35 minute stream this morning I had a lot of fun with you guys there were over a dozen people in the live stream i wanted to go ahead and mention this guys it's our 25 dollars a month subscription based service where you're going to get access to all of these videos down here and a lot more coming in the near future you're going to be getting access to the first cohort discord server and you're also going to be getting access to the morning coffee and crypto live streams where i'm chatting with you guys in real time and discussing the markets in real time with all of you so guys if you're interested in learning more about technical analysis while having a community to trade and learn with while also helping to support the channel. The first cohort is linked down below. I would love to see you join us. If you decide after a month that you're not interested anymore and you don't want to be a part of it, you can leave at any time. I'm not locking you into a subscription period. But anyway, guys, without much further rambling, let's go ahead and dive right on into it. Oh, and also, very important announcement. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button for the YouTube algorithm. Helps out the channel, and I would be very appreciative. Anyway, guys, as you know, over the last five days or so, Bitcoin has been in a pretty major rally here. We've seen Bitcoin put in a 22 to 23% gain over these last five days as Bitcoin has been moving to the upside. And that's really significant because Bitcoin's been trading sideways since mid-November. And in the course of that rally, guys, Bitcoin has broken some major levels of resistance that we're going to be discussing in today's video. But first, I want to show you something kind of cool, and that is the 20 EMA. I talk about the 20 exponential moving average a lot, and there's a reason for it. If we look down here on the hourly chart, you're going to see over the last few days, Bitcoin has actually been testing support on it time and time and time again. Over and over again, Bitcoin has been getting support on this level. Even as Bitcoin has been stair-stepping up here and moving up, trading sideways, moving up, trading sideways, moving up, trading sideways. As Bitcoin would trade sideways and have consolidation and put in bull flags, Bitcoin would trade sideways and go and test that 20 EMA as a level of support. So I want to show you that earlier on in the video. It's pretty cool. And I want to remind you guys how important the 20 EMA is. It's going to be showing up a lot in this video. But before we go any farther, I want to show you some of the major levels of resistance that Bitcoin has broken. So we can kind of lay the foundation for the conclusions and the trading ideas that we're going to have here at the end of the video. First and foremost, guys, Bitcoin has gotten above this long-term downtrend right here. We've been below this downtrend since we put in the first point on this trend in June. Guys, that alone is a very big deal, but that's not the only important level of resistance that Bitcoin has broken. Back down here on the four hourly chart, what we're going to see is a flat level that we've talked about in previous videos as well at $7,777 or around, you know, $7,800 if you're not trying to be all fancy with the numbers like I am. Nevertheless, Bitcoin was below this for quite some time and we kept hitting our head on this level over and over and over and over again. And Bitcoin a few days ago managed to get above it. So Bitcoin has gotten above some important levels of resistance. And also guys, remember how I said the 20. EMA was going to keep showing up. A very major development happened last night. Bitcoin managed to rally above the 20 weekly exponential moving average. Guys, last time that happened, Bitcoin rallied 45% in the span of two days, put in a huge rally. That was the last time Bitcoin got above it. Unfortunately, it wasn't that important because Bitcoin fell again for various reasons. But the point here is, is that when Bitcoin gets above the 20 EMA, as we saw right there, and if we go on our longer term charts, as we can see back in 2015, when Bitcoin gets above this moving average right here, Bitcoin is almost always starting a bull market. This is a huge development, and I'm not trying to sugarcoat it. I'm not trying to blow it out of proportion, but it is a big deal, and I want you guys to understand that. Bitcoin had already gotten above two important levels of resistance, and now, with the movement that we put in last night, we're above, at least for now, this candlestick is not closed yet, we're, at least for now, above a major level of resistance, a moving average on the weekly chart as well, one that is a bullish signal and a warning sign that a bull market is coming. And guys, don't get me wrong, there are some bearish technicals right now. And in fact, there's a decent chance that we have a little bit of a correction. We're going to be discussing that later on in today's video. But I want to just, like I said, we're laying the foundation so that we can come to our conclusion. One of the things I also want to talk about was the discrepancy between the longs and the shorts. Over here on the website Blockchain Whispers. Now look, I've heard a lot of people say bad things about this website. I don't personally know about any of the drama that went on with this website. I don't know what people are talking about. 
If there's another website that compiles the longs and the shorts like this, please tell me in the comment section and I'll be more than happy to, to, to look at it. But this is the resource that I have to compile longs and shorts across three of the major longing and shorting exchanges. And as you guys can see right now, longs are making up 70% of the trades at the moment, as opposed to a month ago when they were making up 40 to 45% of the trades. The market sentiment is starting to shift, guys, and that's a big deal because Bitcoin is never going to rally if people don't believe that it's going to rally. Bitcoin is never going to move up unless people are buying the market. And people aren't going to buy the market unless they think the market's going to go up. Bullishness and bearishness, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, guys. If people are optimistic, they're going to buy and they're going to add buying pressure and then they're going to self-fulfill those prophecies. But if everyone is bearish and everybody thinks Bitcoin's going lower, then guess what? Bitcoin is going to go lower, which is one of the big problems I have with the idea of contrarianism is that those masses Oftentimes they are wrong, but you know, you kind of need people to be buying the market to move the market in the first place. I think that, I mean, that makes sense to me. So seeing the market sentiment shift from primarily bearish or at least neutral to pretty heavily in the bullish camp, especially as Bitcoin's breaking major levels of resistance, that's a big deal. That's a big development. And I'm very happy to see that. Guys, one more thing also that's really cool here is that one of the big reasons, in my opinion, that Bitcoin was not able to put in a new rally here when Bitcoin rally 45% is pretty simple. Um, Bitcoin rally 45%. How can you expect Bitcoin to sustain a new uptrend when it's just rallied 45% and the bulls are absolutely exhausted? That's like having a runner run a marathon and then say, hey, go do it again. That's it just, it just wasn't going to work. And in hindsight, that's pretty obvious. But at the same time, it is still important for the technical analysis. Look, one of the things I love about the rally that we're in right now is that Bitcoin didn't have to rally 45% up to the downtrend to test it. We traded sideways into it, which means that we got really close to that downtrend by the very nature of the trend being down. We got very close to it, and then we didn't have to exert much bullish pressure and exhaust so much of our fuel to actually get to the position where we were able to break those downtrends. So what that means is that the bulls still have a lot of funds. They still have a lot of gas in the tank to be able to continue pushing us higher. They are not exhausted yet, although, like I'll be talking about in a second, there is still a pretty heavy potential of a shorter term correction. I also want to show you guys the oscillators because this is what I'm talking about. I'm leading into that idea of a short-term correction. RSI on the daily chart is getting pretty overextended right now. We're sitting around 70 and the MACD just crossed bullish and is now getting back up above the histogram. And as you can see right here, guys, these lines on the histogram, the bars are getting very spread apart. That's indicating a lot of bullishness. Bitcoin is getting very bullish right now. And even out on the weekly chart, guys, we're seeing the MACD start to converge back on itself in a big way. We're seeing the MACD probably going to be putting in a cross in the next two to three weeks instead of the next four weeks, like we said in yesterday's video, as Bitcoin has been so bullish here for the last 48 hours. And even out on the monthly chart, guys, if we look at the MACD here that we were all very concerned about, this MACD, it is bearish, but if we have a couple months of bullishness, this is very quickly going to cross bullish again. This is not a very bearish MACD cross. It's one that can be reversed very easily. And speaking of the monthly chart, guys, there's actually something very bullish going on here as well. Look at this bullish engulfing candlestick that we have here on the monthly chart. The last time we saw one of those was at the bottom of the last bear market and at the beginning of the new bull market. Bullish engulfing candlestick are a big deal. That's what we're seeing on the monthly chart. And by the way, it's not just on the monthly chart. We're also seeing it on the weekly chart right here. I mean, this is just so skewed that it doesn't, it wouldn't even really register as a bullish engulfing. But even down on the daily chart, guys, look at this. We had one major bullish engulfing candlestick right here, which was a big deal. And we saw another one right over here back in December. I mean, seriously, and even this, guys, Bitcoin, this looks like an inverse head and shoulders pattern to me. That's not even a topic for today's video, but that's what that looks like. The market is looking overwhelmingly bullish at the moment, and there's a lot of reasons to be going long. But there are some things I need to talk to you about about that concept first. Because guys, there's a concept in technical analysis that I teach in the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy. It's called the risk to reward ratio. And that ties into concepts of your risk tolerance. It ties into leverage. It ties into a lot of things. Right now, guys, there is an opportunity to long. And I know a lot of you guys are looking for that because a lot of you guys during the first cohort live stream this morning were asking me, Jeb, should I fill up on my longs? Or should I wait a little bit? Should I take profit? What should I do here? Everything I'm about to say is going to hinge on your risk tolerance and how high the the reward of the trade you're setting up is. But what I want you guys to understand is this. Let's go ahead and make up a fictional market here. Let's say that there is a downtrend right here and Bitcoin has been trading around here. Maybe it's come up and tested it once or twice. Bitcoin is rallying and is rallying and we're getting kind of close to this downtrend of resistance. And you're thinking, okay, we might be about to break this downtrend of resistance. Should I enter a position right now? Well, guys, if you're rallying to a downtrend of resistance, here's how I actually trade this. One, I would put one long position to rally up to the downtrend of resistance. So I'd actually be taking profit right below the downtrend of resistance. And then after we break the downtrend of resistance and we have some big green volume candlesticks coming in down here, then what I would do is I'd go ahead and put in a second trade. And what that means is that in the time period that Bitcoin is deciding whether or not it wants to break 
break or reject off of that downtrend of resistance, I'm not in a trade because that's actually the most risky part of the trade because that's where the decision point is. If you exit a trade right here and then re enter a trade right up here and don't have a trade active while you're in that decision point and that critical decision period, you're missing out on maybe one, two, three percent of reward, but you're probably cutting your risk in half. And that's a big deal because like I always say, guys, the lower you can make your risk and the higher you can make your reward, statistically, the more often you're going to be profitable and thereby the more money you're going to make in the long term. If every single trade you make has a seven to one risk to reward ratio, which is ridiculous, you're normally not going to get one that high and you make a thousand trades like that, you're probably statistically going to be in profit by a large margin. But if every trade you're making has like a 1.5 or a two risk to reward ratio, and you're standing to gain $100 while standing to lose 50, you're probably gonna be in profit, but you know, you could get wiped out pretty easily by one bad trade. Why not cut that risk? Because then that increases the chances of you being profitable in the long term. And one thing you can do here, guys, is you can skip trading that breakout. And the reason I mentioned all this is because if we go back to our chart and we have to kind of come down here, what we're going to see is that Bitcoin is sitting below some very important levels of resistance right now and just around some very important levels of resistance that we're trying to decide if we want to break and maintain and hold above. The big one that I'm looking at is the 20 weekly EMA. Now look guys, this is interesting because we're already above this weekly EMA. So Jeb, shouldn't I enter a position right now because we're above the moving average? No, not necessarily. Look, the 20 weekly EMA is the most important level of resistance that Bitcoin needs to get above. Full stop, period. That's it. If we get above and stay above this, we're off to the races, in my opinion. But we've been above it for one day. This is a weekly chart moving average. This is a very long term moving average, and we can very easily get back below it. Take this case over here, for example. Instead of entering a long position right now, when we haven't really confirmed whether or not we're going to stay above this moving average, why don't we do what we could have done back over here and wait for Bitcoin to come down and test this moving average? And then right here is where we make our trade after we see Bitcoin actually put a bounce in. Why not wait for Bitcoin to confirm that bullish breakout before we put our trade in? Yeah, we're above it right now, but we could easily fall $100 and be back below it. And then all of a sudden, you're long position should have been a short position because that which was support is now acting as resistance. There is a very strong argument to be made right now, guys, that what we're looking at right now, this green candlestick on the daily chart is going to turn into a shooting star and Bitcoin's going to come down and test either this downtrend of resistance, $7,700. We're going to come down here and fill the CME gap that we talked about in yesterday's video. Bitcoin has been green for a week now. RSI is getting into oversold territory. I'm very bullish on Bitcoin right now, but we need consolidation. Why not wait and see how that consolidation plays out and then put a trade in after we have even more confidence in our trades and the risk is lower and we're basically not doing anything to the amount of money we're going to make, we're just reducing our risk. Why not? Why not do that? And look, guys, like I said, this is going to have a lot to do with your risk tolerance. I don't let myself have too high of a risk tolerance because quite frankly, with the power of leverage, you don't need to. But if you're willing to go and have a ton of risk and just you know exactly what you're doing, then you go right ahead and you put a long position in right now. But I would say be careful because there are ways that you can go about this trade that are a little smarter. And hopefully I explain that in a very understandable and digestible way here at the end of this video. So guys, what's the trade? I know you guys are interested because I know I was talking about in yesterday's video. In yesterday's video, I said an entry position is around $82 to $8,500. That's where we are right now. This is not a bad entry position. I want to make this very clear. For the long term, this is not a bad entry position, but understand that this could be the top of a correction or it could be the top of a fall because we haven't really confirmed the bull market yet because we haven't been up here long enough. I'm not personally entering any longer term trades for another three or four days. I really want to see how Bitcoin plays out up here and if Bitcoin can lock in these gains because there's a very decent chance that Bitcoin just falls over and like, fall to the floor right now. I don't really think that's going to happen, but it is possible. So why not just wait a little bit? And I'm not saying miss your opportunity. Watch the markets like a hawk. If you see Bitcoin making some big moves or something, jump on into a trade if that's what you want to do. Just always remember guys, risk to reward, be careful, plan your trades, every single one of them. Make sure you have a stop loss. I don't care how short term of a scalp it is. Always have a stop loss, always have a plan, etc. Guys, think with your head, not with your heart, and you're going to do fine. Seriously, 2020 is going to be a great year. I'm really looking forward to it. I love doing what I do. I'm very happy that crypto commentary is my job now. I love doing the first cohort live streams with you guys in the morning. I love working with video and audio equipment. I love making videos that I'm proud to call my own, and I love trading cryptocurrency with you guys and getting to know you guys, which again is why we made the first cohort. There's 67 members in the first cohort right now. We've had 10 people join in the last two days, and I'm trying to get to know all of you on a one-on-one -on -one basis 
basis. I'm probably going to be in the first cohort a little bit more today than I was yesterday. Look, guys, if you want to get access to our private community, get access to some really smart and intelligent people over there who are making a lot of money. I mean, people are always talking in the trading channel about how they made 50 or 100%, how they made a lot of money off of a scalp. There are people in the voice calls sometimes doing live trading with each other. I was doing that a little while ago, and I'm probably going to do some more of it here pretty soon. If you want to get access to these videos down here, they're going to teach you a lot about wisdom in trading and all future videos that are going to be added here because this list is short compared to what it's going to be in eventuality. If you want to get access to the morning coffee and crypto live stream so you get caught up on all your technical analysis in one place while also getting to talk to me and our amazing community on a one-on-one -on -one basis, guys, the first cohort is the place to go. If you're already a member of CT2A, of which there are almost 1,100 of you guys, which is crazy, if you're already a member of CT2A, shoot me an email or since you're in the first cohort, you'll be a friend of mine on Discord. Tell me on Discord that you joined and that you're a CT2A member and I will give you your first $25 back as a rebate for being in CT2A. So if you guys want to join both of the products, join CT2A first, join first cohort, you get 25 bucks back. That's what I call making some money. Guys, I'm not locking you into a subscription period. You can leave it anytime. $25 is not that much money, especially if you're trying to become a professional trader. Being a professional trader is all about your risk to reward and your return on investment. And I know, guys, that if you take full advantage of what's going on in the first cohort, that this is going to be a worthwhile investment for you. So guys, especially if you're in CT2A, you literally have nothing to lose. You might as well go ahead and join down below and get to know our community. Guys, I would love to see you over there. I'm looking forward to seeing it grow. And guys, also remember, the first cohort is one of the things that's going to help to finance all of the awesome things that I want to do this year. By the end of the this year, I want this channel to have over 100,000 subscribers. I want to have a full studio and maybe some more team members. I want to be flying all around the world to go to conferences and meet you guys and the like. We're working hard to deliver the highest quality content that we can here on the Crypto Jeb YouTube channel. And it's because of your kind contributions that we are able to do that, guys. So if you want to support the channel, CT2A and the first cohort are down below. But I'm going to go ahead and shut my trap because I've been rambling long enough and wrap the video out. But before I do, guys, I want to say something pretty quickly here. One thing I've learned over the last few weeks, and you know, it's something I've been learning for a very long time, but it's something I just realized I learned, is just how much fear will hold you back. Because for a long time, I wouldn't work as hard as I wanted to on the channel, or I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't pursue a relationship as hard as I wanted to, or I wouldn't, you know, I, I wouldn't allow myself to have faith in myself as much as I wanted to. I wouldn't grow because I was scared. And especially when you have a background like I do, which is a very defensive background, a very hard background, then you have a tendency to just kind of want to get a little bit comfortable and just say, screw it, I'm done. And a lot of people get rich because they worked their butt off because they were trying to get out of the situation that they found themselves in. And then very quickly they realize, okay, well, I don't have to, I don't have to be scared anymore, so I'm going to get complacent. And then that very complacency is what screws them, and then they lose everything. Guys, moving here into 2020 and into this new decade, let's not get complacent. Let's not stop working hard. Let's work even harder when things are going good. Let's not use that as a time to relax and lay off the gas and take a break. Let's use that as an opportunity to push even harder and actually make sure that we're able to sustain what we're doing for the long term and that we're able to continue the success that we've already built into the distant future. Because a lot of people, when they have a little bit of success, they stop being afraid, they stop being scared, they get complacent and they lose it because they did. Being scared will hold you back, but also that lack of fear, that lack of fear of losing it is one of the things that will actually make you fail. So be very careful with that concept of fear. Be very careful with getting complacent because both of those are two sides of the same sword and both sides of them will kill you if you don't keep a very close eye on your mindset. But guys, that is pretty much going to wrap it out for today's video. I don't know how long this video is going to be, but the raw footage is over 32 minutes long now. So we're going to go ahead and wrap it out. But before that, I do want to thank each and every single last one of you for watching as always. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.